Welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting and Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak. I want to take a minute here and show you a little bit about my bow fishing boat I just got done building. A lot of you guys have asked for information on this. It's probably going to be a two or three video deal. Um, if you can see my breath out here, it's pretty cold. It's winter. I got, that's why I'm doing it in the garage. It's uh, uh, first day of March, we've got a major snowstorm going on out there, so I can't bring it outside and do it. But uh, like I said, a lot of you guys have asked for it, so I'm going to show you some of it now. It is not finished. I'm only about probably 70, 75% of the way done with this boat. A lot of stuff still got to be finished, but I'm going to go through it a little bit with you here. I'm going to do it pretty fast as well, too. There'll be a podcast where I'll have more time and I can slow down and explain, explain things in better detail. But for this one right here, I'm going to give you, a, you know, the crash course deal on it. Um, the haul itself, the boat. I went down to Alabama and got this. I ordered it from Backwoods Landing down there. It is a well-built uh, haul. Uh, well-built made it. It is a 17 by 60 boat with 28 inch sides. So 17 feet long. It's uh, 60 inches across the bottom and 78, or 78 inches across top. So uh, five feet across the bottom, 17 feet long, seven and a half feet across this way with 28 inch deep sides. Uh, the side depth is really important because of the weight that we carry. Again, I'll explain, explain some of the reasons for that better um, if you listen to it in the podcast, but uh, that's very important for me so that I can carry the weight that we carry as bow fishermen and still be safe. My other boat only had 19 inch sides and uh, we were constantly running about that water line about right there a lot of the time. It was too dangerous. This one gives me a lot more capability and capacity. Um, the trailer, this is a well or a uh, trailer I got from Backwoods Landing. They make it themselves. It is a incredibly well built. It's built like a tank. Um, now it is painted trailer, not galvanized, which is kind of a bummer. But for their price of thirteen hundred bucks, once you get a, a thirty-five hundred pound axle, full size tires. I got radial tires on there. I got Easy Lube hubs. Um, this thing is built like a beast, and for thirteen hundred bucks, with everything, including the spare tire and the jack stand, uh, you just couldn't beat it. it. Would have been about double that price to get the same thing in galvanized. So uh, if I got to touch up a little spot or a stone chip here or there with some black paint uh, each year. Um, I'll tolerate it. It's built like a beast and going to be perfect. So uh, that's the haul and the trailer, both of them from Backwoods Landing. Now the boat. Um, I, I special ordered it because I wanted a lot of custom options. Everything about this boat. The haul is a standard size haul, 1760. You can get it with 28 inch sides. But the decking, the, all the details, everything in here was a bunch of emails back and forth between me and them uh, making it exactly like I want. I got a lot of reinforcements in here, things of that nature, which I'll show you. But uh, I, so I custom ordered it from them, having them build it to my specs. Uh, I'm going to grab the camera, bring you over, show you around a little bit so you can kind of see what's what excited about that um, this I don't know if you can see I'll try and actually highlight it here if I can with my flashlight if you can see it if that helps any yes um, notice there that steel plate that's welded on there um, that is going right to that eye bolt which you can see right there on the bottom of this um, I had weld built when they build this boat reinforce that bow eye for me so there's a st thick aluminum plate on this side and one on the inside that sandwiches the boat and they're all welded together uh, to give it that reinforced strength that way when I'm hauling that boat up on that trailer with all that weight in there uh, that bow eye is going to hold together real well and not give me any problems or crack or Okay, starting with that deck. That deck is six and a half feet wide at the back, six and a half feet long from front to back, and five feet wide at the very front. So it's a huge deck up there. I can actually lay across between these lights, and I don't even, I mean, I, I don't even touch one light to the other one. Uh, so like I said, a six foot guy could lay across there and not touch her. It gives you the example of how wide that actually is. Um, I had that deck built right at, well built when I made it, and then it's reinforced underneath with a bunch of extra braces and reinforcements and uh, extra gussets and stuff to be able to handle four uh, guys up there shooting without ever flexing or having any issues and uh, so that's the front deck and then uh, floor wise in here what I did is I used a half inch plywood floor I like that setup that's what I used on all my other two boats uh, it is open sided so that I can wash things out I can take a hose slide that hose right up underneath there and squirt everything right up out the other side uh, works very very good I like it a lot especially for clean out that's how my like I said my other two boats were so I did the same thing on this one again you'll notice 
notice those two back seats, they are not a full bench all the way across. I did that on purpose. This way I could walk through there. I stand a lot when I'm driving so I can stand up back there. Uh, I can walk between there and I can, they're three feet wide. I can fit two people on this seat, two people on this seat if I want to, um, or I can sit down and drive from this corner or stand and drive. It gives me a lot of flexibility. I like that layout and uh, I can walk right through it without having to step over a bench or fight with anything. I can put my generator right up on that bench over there if I want to. So a uh, real flexible layout. I really like the design. Makes it for a very open, uh, functional, simple style boat layout. Lots of room for my generator. Lots of room for my fish bucket. Uh, just a great setup on there. Now you will notice that I am using my standard, uh, my normal original 20 horse Yamaha that I got, 20 horse Yamaha four stroke that I had on my other boat. I love this motor. It's got a rock hopper motor guard on it, which makes it very nice. This motor is uh, not a power trim model, which is nice. I got a lever I flipped there and it leaves that motor loose and flexible. So if I hit a stump or a rock, that motor just kicks up out of the way and bounces right over it with no big deal. I love that setup. Um, even as it's configured, this boat is actually faster than my 1648 was with this motor because it sits shallow lower in the water, but I can get 23 miles an hour uh, with that 20 horse motor on this boat, the way it's set up right now. Probably a little less when I load it down with batteries and everything, uh, but it still moves pretty good. Uh, trailer things, some of the stuff I did on there that I should have had them do originally when I had it, when I had them build it for me, but I didn't think about it, so I had to add them myself. But you'll notice on here, when you get the trailer, it comes with this bunk and this bunk here. So these two bunks are there, but they're moved over a little farther. Uh, being a bow fishing boat and all the batteries and the weight and everything I'm going to have in there, I wanted more. So I added that bunk and I added that one. So now I have four bunks for this boat to sit on to handle that weight better. Um, those are cost me about a hundred bucks extra to add them myself and took a little bit of work, you know, to get them under there, but uh, it was well worth it. Like I said, if you were to order one of these, I would order it automatically with the four bunks on there as opposed to just two. That way you don't have to fight with trying to do it with the boat on there. Um, but that's what I did. You'll also notice here, interesting little tidbit. This is on the back of the trailer. This is a light. It is a headlamp. It is mounted on a rubber clamp and it is actually wired with some uh, bow fishing uh, monofilament line um, for serving tool stuff. Uh, but uh, that's how, so it's permanently locked on there. Uh, but it is a light that I can turn on and I can use it for when I'm backing up and, and these ramps that a lot of the ramps and a lot of the stuff, the dirt ramps and places where I drop in at at night, um, there's, there's no lights whatsoever. So trying to back that boat up and line it up with where that little hole is in the water you're going too hard. This light makes that a lot easier. I don't have to run wires to the front of the boat or have any switches or plugs or nothing. Uh, I just mount it on there. Once a year I'll change the battery out. I just unscrew the bottom cap, pull it out, put the new battery in. Um, but this way when I come into those launches at night, once I park my boat and get it lined up, I come over, I unhook my straps, I turn the light on. I got perfect light as I back my boat down that trailer ramp. When I go park my truck, I turn the light off. When I come to get it, I turn it on, back down to my boat. I can see where I'm going. And uh, when I pull it out, I turn it off. Waterproof, simple. It's an Army Tech headlamp that I had laying around and just a kind of a little invention I came up with to, to make life a little bit easier for loading and unloading. Now, as far as the decking on here, this is hydro turf decking is what this is. It comes in two thicknesses. You can kind of see by my finger to get an idea. This is the thicker stuff here. Same stuff they use on jet skis, that sort of stuff. Um, the, the hydro turf that I put on there is actually smooth. You see a lot of people have it where it's actually got grooves or notches or diamond patterns in there. Um, I went with all smooth on there based on the recommendation of where I got it from uh, John over at Show Me Bow Fishing Customs. He's the one that I got this from and he said that the smooth is a lot better. It cleans out real well. Uh, you don't have to fight with fish guts inside those uh, trenches and things like that. And I took his advice and I love it. It's absolutely incredible. It gives you good, uh, no, no slip traction up here. It doesn't uh, mar very easy. It's comfortable little bit of cushion, not much, but just a great finish on there and it quiets and makes no, no noise and deadens down that aluminum sound. Very, very happy with that. Again, that's just a regular hydro turf is what it is. Um, I think that's the swamp camo pattern is what I got. I have it on the whole deck. It's completely done in hydro turf and so are my both of my back seats have hydro turf on them. Uh, like I said, I really, really impressed with this stuff. It's not very expensive, was not hard to put on, and just uh, uh, I'm really fired up for it. Just great. It's a great way to have that, uh, that no slip surface and that cushion and comfort up there and deaden the noise down. Now for the trolling motor, I went with a Minkota. This is an 80 thrust, 24 volt hand tiller 
uh, hand throttle, hand control trolling motor. What I really like about it, uh, 80 pounds of thrust will definitely move this boat around really well. And it also has that hand tiller so I don't have to fight with a foot pedal or get fatigued working with a foot pedal. That hand crank makes it a lot easier. Uh, and a uh, 24 volt system so it runs on two batteries but a great trolling motor. I'm very excited for it. Uh, it it's just going to be a great motor. I, I got nothing more to say on that than I'm just really, really excited to be able to use that and what it's going to do for me. Um, before we get into the bow fishing lights, uh, nav lights on here. I got one on each side. I got a port and a starboard side uh, one so this way they can be seen because I got all these lights on there. It's too hard to put one in the middle and have it visible. So these two little end lights right here make it where they can be seen real well. These LED lights that I got on the front, I got these from Amazon. They're Nylite or something is what makes them. Had a lot of reviews. They were like 40 bucks for both of them. I got one on each side. Um, those are white. They're very, very bright. They're a mixture of uh, flood and spot LEDs inside of each one of these. So you got a good combination of fill light and flood light and spotlight all coming from these LEDs. And they are wired to a switch back there by my motor. So as I'm standing there uh, driving a boat, I can hit that switch and turn these lights on and use them, at, you know, to when I'm not running my, my main lights where I don't want to, you know, wake people up or blind them out of their houses. I can use those lights uh, to navigate the rivers and stuff like that. So it works great. Uh, spare tire carrier on here, a nice thing. That's uh, lock on the top. I don't have a padlock on there yet, but you'll notice that you can actually put a padlock on there So when your trailer sitting there in the middle of the night, it's some remote boat launch uh, You can lock your spare on there where nobody can steal it from you, which is definitely kind of a nice feature Now for the bow fishing lights these lights that are on here these are 400 watt HPS lights and I got them, uh, you know, the bulbs and everything you got. I bought it as a whole turnkey set from John over at Bow Fishing Customs. It show me Bow Fishing, I'm sorry, John over at Show Me Bow Fishing Customs. He's the one that builds these. Each of these housings are handmade by him. You can see how thin they are, how nice and simple design to them. They come with the brackets. Everything about these things are incredible. If you were to buy 400 watt HPS lights from like Econo Light, where they were fully enclosed a whole unit, um, they weigh about 35 or 40 pounds a piece. These, these come in at about seven pounds for that whole light fixture uh, with the bracket and everything. They're very, they're just amazing. They're very shallow in design, so they fill the light and throw light everywhere you want them. I'll talk more about these here in another video, but um, you get the whole package. I got the whole package from John over at Show Me Bowfish and Customs. It's the lights, the bulbs, uh, the ballasts that run them, which are mounted up underneath my deck, which I'll show you here in a minute. That four bolt pattern here, there's two here and two here. On the other side, two there and two there, those are holding up my framework for my three ballasts over here and my three ballasts that are mounted over on this side. I'll show you that stuff, but you buy the whole package from John over at Show Me Bow Fishing Customs. These are tempered glass. These are built, uh, he welds them by hand out of aluminum to fit and finish on them. The quality, every little thing, even down to the grommets and the setup on here is absolutely phenomenal. These lights are the best lights I've ever seen ever. Um, and they are just wicked bright and controllable. You can dim them everything. They're just an amazing, amazing setup. Again, we'll get into more of that stuff as I get in there and cover some more of that in probably the next video. All right, now I'm going to kind of go into the inside, show you some of that stuff. But again, these lights, John over at Show Me Bow Fishing Customs, which you can see right there on there. He's got it actually laser etched right into the thing, uh, into the, the glass on here. But John over there at uh, Show Me Bow Fishing Customs, again, he, he made, custom made the housing for these 400 watt HPS lights. When you buy them from him, you can buy individual pieces. I got the lights, the brackets or the housings, the brackets, the bulbs, the ballasts. I got it all as one whole package deal from him. He also is the one that supplied the hydro turf. Great guy to talk to. Um, he's he's a traditional bow hunter. He's got mad skills as a welder. One of the best I've ever seen. Uh, quality and fit and finish and attention to detail is amazing. And everything about the, the whole process of what you get from him and how he'll help you is just incredible. Um, and, uh, you know, he does a lot of stuff for bow fishing. Uh, you know, he's been instrumental in a lot of designs for some these other boat fishing boats that you can buy on the market. Uh, just a great guy, great to talk to, friendly, and just uh, top-notch service, top-notch products, just incredible. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you in underneath here and I'm going to show you these ballasts. I'm going to grab a light here so I can put it in there and kind of show you, but I will show you uh, the setup under the deck here, what we got. Let me see if I can get in there. I mean, not get in there with you. Now, inside this keyhole here, this deck, this will let me fit my body in here. It's big enough, just big enough for me to fit in there. But underneath this deck, 
there is enough room under here that I can actually have, I mean, it doesn't see it uh, very well on the camera, but this deck is big enough that my whole family can fit under here and lay with our heads up at that end and our feet at this end and we don't touch either side. I can fit all four of my family members um, under this deck. That's how much room's under here. Now that black bracket that you see right there, that is my breaker switch for my uh, trolling motor right there. So if, uh, if I trip it, I can go under there, reach right under there and uh, reset it if I need to. Um, now, let me switch this camera around so I can show you. Uh, but looking here, if you look back on this side, here you will see these are the ballasts for that light. See, I got one, what were you at? One, two, and three. These are the digital dimmable ballasts. Uh, that run all the lights on this whole side of the bullet over here. Uh, and then basically there is a knob right here on here. Each one of them has one. This uh, knob that's right there uh, is a dimmable knob here. You can see it real good right there. But that knob will let me run these lights at 50%, 75, 100, or 110 power. So these ballasts control it. They're mounted on this uh, aluminum frame here that I made. Uh, they are all bolted to that frame, and then that frame is bolted to the wall of my boat. So I got three ballasts on this side, and then I also have have the other three on this side over here which are on the other side of the boat so six ballast one ballast for each light again John at uh, bowfishingcustoms.com he gives you uh, the but you get the lights the housings the ballasts the bulbs the whole it's a whole turnkey operation all you got to do is mount it wherever you want it uh, this cord hanging here and that other one that you see over there these two cords those are where my generator my wire for my generator will actually plug into these this one here each of these runs all these lights this one over here runs all the lights on the other side they will both plug together right into my generator cord which will come out of this hole and go straight to my generator Generator. So, but as you can see, ton of room, tons and tons of room up in underneath this deck up here. Um, another thing I have here too is I have mounted a. You can see it right here. This light switch panel, piece of angle aluminum that I took. I made it myself. Um, and then I got a light. This one right here on here runs will run my navigation lights on the front of the boat. This next one right here, that second one, where are you at on here? I'm kind of lost on where. There it is. Uh, but the bottom one runs my navigation lights on the front. The middle one is going to run my interior lights that I have in here. And the top one is just a dead extra one that I'm not using yet. Uh, but nice little hidden away tucked in. Uh, real easy to get to just by reaching around the corner here. So it's waterproof and they're out of the way and protected very well. But that's my little uh, light switch setup that I got under the deck. Coming out of here, we have in the corners here, you see those white strips? Those are the LED lights. Um, I got them at Walmart. They weren't expensive, but man, are they super bright, very uh, durable, functional, waterproof. I got one in each corner of the boat. Those will light up the whole interior of this boat very well. You'll notice these C-clamps that are kind of mounted in all the corners and all, the way, all over the place. Those are tie-downs for me. So I can tie down my fish bucket when I'm driving down the road uh, so that it doesn't wiggle around or fall over. I got those kind of in all corners. In this corner here, uh, you'll also see that I have a cable right there that is bolted down to that floor. That's I have one of those on this side and I have one on the other side of that seat. Those are so I can lock up my generator uh, so nobody can steal it. If I'm you know going if I'm going into a restaurant or something like that or anything of that nature it lets me lock that up. Those wires you see running on there right there those are for my trolling motor. They go from under the deck all the way to the back which I'll get into and show you here in a minute. Uh, now these stools that height uh, to get up on that deck is pretty tall. So having that, uh, that stool, one on each side, makes it real easy. Notice the springs that are hanging underneath of them. Those springs will connect to that little eyelet on the bottom of the floor down there. And it causes a lot of tension and keeps those sp uh, stools right where I want them. What's nice though is they're there and I can hook them with that spring and keep them right there. But if I don't want to have them there, I can unhook them, move them back here, use them as seats, put them on a deck. I can do whatever I want to with them. Because, uh, you know, they're, they're permanently mounted or uh, easy to remove by those springs. But that spring tension holds them with their rubber feet, keeps them rock solid, and they do not move, not even a little bit. Now, moving around the rest of the boat here too, I got an oar mounted right here, just a simple clamp, and then I got one of those little twisty ties on the front of it that's actually drilled in there, and it pops, I drilled a hole through that actual front of the deck right in here, and I let that uh, wire come through there, and I wrap around there, hold that nice and sturdy and stable. Same concept here for my uh, push pole, which you see mounted right here along the boat. 
Uh, basically, it is just a hand clamp that I cut off, put some uh, wash machine hose on, and uh, then I used a couple of those rubber ties on there. It holds it real nice and firm. That thing ain't going nowhere. It doesn't move. But if I need it off, a couple quick twists to this thing right here, turn that a couple times real fast, and it pops right out of there. Sweet and easy. Great little setup. Very functional. Um, and uh, back here towards the back, I have... Uh, my depth finder that I got on here. Now this one is not a GPS unit. It is a Garmin Echo uh, 301C, uh, but it was not expensive. But what I really like about it, I'll show you in one of the videos when I get the rest of this boat finished, uh, but it displays the water depth and it displays water temperature in really huge numbers. It's got a screen setting where all it does is show those two numbers on there really big. So I got it on a RAM mount positioned like it is right now I can see it when I'm standing back there driving and pay attention but then when we get out there and bowfish, fish I can quickly turn that knob and, and face it towards the front of the boat so when I'm up there on the front of the deck fishing I can look back here and see all my information on that depth finder so makes it really nice and easy um, with the setup here how we have it there will basically be uh, four batteries back here there will be four 30 group 31 batteries one of them will sit right here the other one will sit right here my gas tank will then sit right here, and my other little gas tank will sit right next to there. And then I'll have two batteries back here, one on this side and one on this side. So I got a battery on each corner of the boat. There'll be some over here, two here, and two over there, and the tanks will sit right here. It evens the weight out perfectly, and then that battery switch that you see right there will run them. I'll be running my trolling motor off of these two batteries on this side. And then my electronics will be running off of one battery here, but they'll be these two batteries will be connected to that switch. So halfway through the night, if I start running out of uh, um, battery power for my trolling motor, I just flip that switch, and now the trolling motor will run off of these two batteries over here. You'll also note that I have two of these dry boxes uh, mounted right onto the transom. There's one right there. There's another one on that side. So I have two of them, one on each side right there. Those are great for cell phones, GPSs, paperwork, flares, UHF radio, anything I want to put in them. Works really good. Uh, bilge pump wise, that is 1100 gallon per minute uh, rule uh, bilge pump with a one and a quarter outlet. So it's a very high power, spits, spits a lot of water out really fast kind of thing type bilge pump. I mounted it on my own Kydex mount. Uh, that plate is made out of Kydex, and you notice I got it on a 45 degree angle. It still shoots the water out there real good, but I don't have any major bends in my hose, which restricts water flow. So now that water shoots straight up and out of there ultra fast. Um, there's another Kydex piece that that switch is mounted on. I did not want to have to drill a hole into this uh, part of my boat big enough to fit that switch to, so I made that out of a piece of Kydex um, and mounted that switch on there too. So just painted it, worked really good. This stern light. This stern light that's on here is made it up, made by Max It Out LEDs. Absolutely incredible. You can get this from John at uh, Show Me Bowfish and Customs as well, too. Uh, but it's mounted on a fiberglass pole and then mounted on a ram mount. Uh, so it makes it very functional. If I tip this thing straight up when I'm out there fishing, if I catch a tree branch or a bridge or anything like that, all it does is fold that light over. It's not going to break it. It's basically indestructible. There's videos out there where people are taking this thing and smashing it against everything you can imagine, and it cannot get it to break. Uh, just the best ever designed uh, uh, stern light I've ever seen. It just absolutely incredible. I can't wait to get it out there on the water. I used to break so many of those other ones all the time catching them on things or just from wear and tear. This one here I'm expecting to be the last stern light I ever buy ever. Um, now also another custom thing here like I did in front. You can see another piece of angle um, aluminum that I made. I made a little switch set right there that uh, one of those switches is going to run my bilge pump. One of them runs my stern light and the other one, the closest one to the motor over on this side over here, right there. That one is the one that runs my LEDs on the front of the boat. So it's really easy to work. Another piece of something I did I, right there, you can see that's just another piece of angle aluminum that I cut and drilled and glued on there. It holds two extra bolt plugs. Keeps them simple, out of the way, ready to go, um, very functional. Um, this aluminum plate that you see right here on the back of the floor, that is just a guard so that you don't rip it up when you're stepping up and down on there. I did that on my other boat fishing boat, worked out really good. Just a functional piece right in there. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of the layout of the inside of this boat and uh, kind of the setup on here. But this thing is a beast. I know it's hard to see in a video, but it, there's a lot of room on here. Like I said, I can lay down between that light and that light and not touch. You know, my head wouldn't touch and my feet wouldn't touch. So ton of room on here, a lot of great options, a lot of setup.
So there you have it for, for the first part of this kind of thing. Like I said, I'm only about 70% of the way done with this boat. I plan on having the rest here finished up. I got my generator that just came. It's actually sitting over there. Uh, my batteries, I'm not gonna order for another week or two. I just got my chargers. There's generator and cord that I'm gonna use. I will cover all that. Um, as you can see, there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be finished, a lot of wiring that's gotta be done, uh, things put in together. I got a lot of stuff. I got piles of stuff over here that's gonna end up in that boat. Uh, so I got a lot of things here still to do and uh, once I have it all together and ready then I will um, do another video that shows you all that but so many of you people have been asking about it and I know the season's not too super far out you guys are starting to work on your boats uh, so I thought I'd take a minute and show you what I got so far just so it gives you some ideas and uh, some things to uh, look for or you know whatever I can to help you out with everything but uh, watch for the next video It'll probably be another couple weeks before I get it done when I have everything finished like I want but this is what I got so far for you hope you enjoyed it get it it's Jason Samkoviak traditional bow hunting and wilderness podcast and uh, we'll be back with more stuff soon thanks bye